Hi, Gordon and Pralat. Uh, this is Jonas. So some three weeks ago when we met, I promised that before the end of the year I would have a first iteration on a um, general purpose exploratory tool for the, the um, uh, reverse phase protein array data. So here it is. We are a few hours before the end of the year. This is December 31st. And I'm going to try to cover these five points while um, showing you a, a, t a little bit how, how this tool works. So the current version has no frills. It starts like this with nothing on it. You can get your data from text or, or Excel or uh, even as S3DB. So I'm going to load the data. I'll go back to the five points in the end. Okay, and before I describe the different elements of the interface, let's have a closer look at the data. So this is some older data. I don't really remember where I got it. I think it was from Brian. But uh, the, the data format is nothing special. So the first column has uh, sample names. And I didn't have sample names, so I made them up by numbering them. And the first row contains the antibody names. OK, can close this. So when you load the data, uh, immediately a number of different settings are used to produce the fol following display. So starting with the lower uh, left-hand side, you have here the cluster analysis of the samples themselves uh, according to some sort of metric. We'll go back to that in a minute. And then what we have here is the actual data, the values between, in this case, some negative value and, and 20. And this is the first point where you may want to think about normalization. OK, let's do, say, quantile normalization by sample. And now the values go between 0 and 1, as, as, as they should. And you see uh, the values represented now according to this color scheme. So these, these are the samples, and these are the 50 antibodies, so the 50 parameters. So now I'm going to jump to the very top. On the very top, you have the same cluster analysis performed, but now on the parameters. And a default uh, cutoff point is selected to color the different branches of the dendrogram. There, there is some theory behind this, uh, which, which I can explain later if you want. OK, now in the middle, we have that cross tabulation of correlation coefficients that you, Gordon, uh, did manually last time we talked. And by the way, I'm there are lots of other features here I'm not going to cover, so you could actually save this in Excel or as a PDF, print it out, and so on. Now, you last time you didn't use an Euclidean distance metric. You used uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient. So there we are. And now you, you see the clusters better defined. OK, now continuing the description of the tool. So cluster analysis of the samples, the values themselves with normalization if selected, the cross tabulation of parameter versus parameter, so pairwise as association measured by a metric of your choice. And finally, on the upper left-hand side, you have one of the antibodies selected. And you can select any one. I'm going to select estrogen resistance here. and. Uh, I want to highlight, it's one of the five points, the fact that bottom-up exploratory analysis tool like cluster analysis, they tend to dilute fine-grained associations between members of the clusters. And what you can see here is that for a given cutoff point, you wouldn't expect a member of this red cluster to be associated with members of the yellow cluster. But indeed, indeed you find quite a few. And I'm going to decrease this value of the cutoff point, somewhere around 0 0.4. Actually, let's put it exact, that's 0 0.4. And now you find out ER here. It's still closely related, it appears, with E. Catherine, then to other members of its own smaller subcluster. And th th this is the point where I think having an interactive interface makes a huge difference, because it really allows the person looking at the data not to be misled in taking this clusters too seriously, because if we have 40 parameters, we are looking at a 40-dimensional space, which is being visualized, is being really twisted into being visualized as a two-dimensional space. So let's explore this a little better. Now I'm going to use something I call here a mask, and I'm going to represent only the distances that are below this cutoff point. And you can immediately see here that ER appears to be indeed very close. E. Catherine. See? 
So these finer grained relationships between members of the larger clusters in this data set they're actually quite prevalent. I'm not saying this is this will be true for the data set you guys promised me. I'll go back to this in the end. I'm very much looking forward lo looking at that data set. But th this happened quite often and, and these relationships are often ignored when one does cluster analysis. So there are a number of tools that allow you to explore this further, including rotating the representation. Okay, it's computer slowed down a little bit for some reason. Okay, there it is, it's back. And you could also, instead of having this hard cutoff point, you could instead have some sort of transparency tool to highlight the back or, or to represent the background with a fainter color scheme. So you see that there are lots of graphic tools that we can push into the user's desktop in order to provide a, a richer interaction with the data set. You can also play with the uh, uh, color scheme, red, green, and again, whatever you do here, it gets reflected immediately. You could also do gray scales and, and so on. You, you I think you get the picture. Also, there are a number of tools for the projection of one of the parameters and its neighbors. And so PCA is, is, is an example, principal component analysis. But there are a number of other tools. And again, what we are able to pull in, into this graphic interface is that all these computational statistic tools for dimension top-down re dimensionality reduction, like principal component analysis, bottom-up uh, exploratory analysis using cluster trees, looking and exploring the actual cross tabulation of pairwise comparisons between all the parameters and linking that back to the uh, original uh, data values. So I'm going to stop here. You've seen previous tools before developed by, by this paradigm using bioinformatics station. So you know that you can copy paste to Word and export to Excel. But there let me go through the five points just to make sure we get everything across. So this is a general purpose exploratory analysis tool. Uh, this was developed as a complement to the general purpose discriminant analysis tool by um, the nearest ranked neighbors uh, tool that, that you've seen me demo before. Uh, one of the, I think, most useful utilizations of this tool will be to visualize database queries. So when a, a the query results come back, it would be useful to be able to explore them in any other ways than just a list of numbers. So these tools can be triggered automatically within this code distribution infrastructure that we designate as bioinformatics station. So th they can be triggered automatically to allow the user to explore the data uh, immediately. Uh, there is also, okay, number point four already uh, went through it. So th there's a lot of misuse of multivariate statistic tools that are not completely um, avoided by having experts collaborating with you, human experts. The human experts can just as well uh, in introduce new features in the graphic user interfaces as they can answer emails, with one difference is that the graphic user interfaces operate within a few seconds and human interaction takes a lot longer. So I think there is a, a combination of both modes of interaction that would make this more, more productive for everybody. And finally, the graphic elements of the, the user interface uh, can be linked and are being linked to wiki tools such that this learning experience goes both ways. So the person generating the data would learn more about the computational tools available to explore them, but also the people identifying algorithms would be able to get feedback from you. So by clicking on a specific tool, a user could say, I don't understand this feature, what does this mean? And uh, a discussion could ensue uh, teaching both both sides, the data generation, the data analysis, something about how this should be done. Okay, I'm taking too long, especially for, for a day like today. And uh, I look forward to talking to, to you soon. And I also look forward to seeing that fantastic data set we discussed last time. So we can try to find some structure that may, may be missed by um, other tools. And also look forward to try to link this to other uh, in a way, dimensionality reduction tools like pathway in enrichment and so on. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop here. Uh, hope you guys have a, a good new year, and uh, talk to you next year. Then, bye. <laughs>